Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now there are plenty of computers listed on eBay as for parts or not working with the problems varying in significance and seriousness from machine to machine. I'll often see the same PCs listed over and over because no one wants to buy them especially if they're a bit older so I thought I'd start buying them, fixing them up and giving them a new home. The one inside this box was listed as Dell Optiplex 390 CPU at 3.3 gigahertz with the description going Going on to say I don't know the specifications it only turns on and off partly for just 15 pounds I didn't really care what the specs were and at the point of filming the on-screen footage you're looking at now I had no idea what would await inside there was no doubt that this PC was well packaged it took a good 15 minutes to cut away all the tape and cardboard once I had though I saw a site that teleported me back to the last year of my high school days an optiplex 390 in all its glory. There are a few marks here and there which is usually standard when it comes to these secondhand systems but that never bothers me. Inside the unit there were a few things that stood out. The first was that it was actually pretty clean. It's definitely been kept in a tidy home or clean work environment. The second noteworthy point was the lack of RAM. This would explain why the seller said it only turned partly on and off. There was probably power but no display. Of course there's always the possibility that the seller just decided to keep this before sending it. Moving on and I noticed that the connectors to the DVD drive were unplugged that these could have come loose on the journey to me. Before adding some memory, DDR3 to be precise, I gave the Optiplex a quick once over to check for any more loose or unplugged cables and while most things appeared to be in order, I did find a couple of screws rattling around underneath the motherboard. These seem to have come from the motherboard itself so I fastened these back in place. The idea with these broken or faulty machines is to fix them up, let the seller know and then sell them off to their new homes, unless the seller wants them back. The money could then go towards saving more aging systems. But now the moment of truth. I added two 4GB sticks to this Optiplex totaling 8GB clocked at 1333MHz. That's enough for a system like this which is best suited to everyday computing. At this point in time I still didn't know what the processor was that we had inside but all is about to be revealed. After pressing the power button the 390 whooshed into life and went straight into the BIOS. It was from here I went into the system information tab and got a very nice surprise. I was assuming that we'd have an i3 in here, most likely a 2120 given that the listing said 3.3 GHz and these are socket 1155 systems. So seeing an i7 2600 was unexpected, I actually captured my surprise live and you can hear it in this footage. Whoa, I was I'm not expecting that. That may seem a bit like an overreaction for an old CPU like this, but considering that the quad core i7-2600 still sells for more on its own than I paid for the entire PC, I was very happy. This will definitely help maximise any profit. All the excitement didn't stop me from remembering to do the DVD drive check, but unfortunately there was nothing left behind in here. I once found a copy of Microsoft Office 2003, so that's the item to beat, but no such luck this time. After rebooting, I was also disappointed by the lack of an operating system, but you can't win them all. I did end up installing Windows 10, and it ran fine, about as well as you'd expect with an aging quad core and an HDD anyway. The hard drive, by the way, is one terabyte in capacity, so plenty of space for the next owner to store plenty of what's important to them. It probably Probably won't be games but having said that if they can find a low profile card that will fit in here and work with the 250 watt PSU then it might make for an acceptable very light gaming system. Alternatively the board is of a standard form factor so it could be removed from this case and used elsewhere with a better PSU and full size GPU. So then the Dell Optiplex 390 is fixed and thanks to the i7 it's better spec wise than I was anticipating. Not bad for just £15 but I do want to know what the i7-2600 is capable of as part of a modest gaming PC just in case anyone buys it with that in mind. I decided to take the processor and motherboard out of the Dell, replace the 8 gigs of RAM with 16 gigs of 1866 dual channel memory and pair both of these with a GTX 980, a once high end card from 2014.
So as I said, you won't be able to get a GTX 980 in one of these Dell systems. Uh, the power supply won't handle it and there's no room in the system itself to contain such a card. As I said though, if you did buy one of these or something, or maybe you bought this exact machine and you wanted to take everything out and put it in a different case, pair it with a better graphics card, hopefully this will give you some idea of what older specs like this that don't cost too much can do. And our first game is Cyberpunk 2077. At the lowest settings, we saw an average of 50 FPS with a 1% low of 32 and a 0.1% low of 27. So definitely some dips and drops in those more CPU intensive areas. But overall, considering the age of these specifications, I think it was an acceptable experience, especially considering that we didn't enable any upscaling. Red Dead Redemption 2 with the ultra textures and everything else turned down to lowest apart from the TAA which was set to medium now and we saw 56 FPS on average with a 1% low of 43 and a 0.1% low of 40 so a pretty smooth and solid experience although busier areas like Saint Denis and Valentine here those city areas with more NPCs on screen will give the processor more trouble. Counter Strike almost said CSGO, Counter-Strike 2, 1080p with the lowest settings, 106 FPS, although there were a few issues as you can see with those percentile lows due to the CPU. All in all though, it was an acceptable experience, but this processor is showing its age in this CPU intensive title. GTA 5 is pretty old now and as such had no real trouble with the i7-2600 and GTX 980 combo averaging 87 FPS on average with the high settings and FXAA enabled as a form of anti-aliasing. Not all games will of course be playable and those games that are just pretty poorly optimised anyway like Starfield here will run quite badly even at the low preset with FSR. Here we have FSR 2 and 70% res scale with an average of 31 FPS. The percentile lows are also pretty bad and this looks quite blurry as well. Using FSR 2 with this card certainly doesn't look as good as it would with a more modern GPU at least not from what I've found, and busier areas will give the system even more grief than this. Finally, it's Forza Horizon 5, which generally runs very well across a wide range of systems that I test 80 FPS on average with the medium preset and TAA here, with a 1% low of 57 and a 0.1% low of 46, so a more than acceptable experience for these aging specs. I think this gives you a good idea of what something like the i7-2600 is capable of, still in 2023, so it was nice to find one inside this Optiplex 390 machine. If we sort of bring it back from those gaming results though then I think this Optiplex is still a very solid system for everyday usage and if you wanted to put a low profile card in here it could still make you very happy especially if you don't really want to do anything too intensive with it. I plan to buy a lot more of these uh, so-called four parts or not working systems on eBay, especially ones that cost next to no money, with the hopes of fixing them up and selling them to a new owner. Of course, I won't intend to make much profit, if any. This is all about seeing what I can do with the machine. So this will be sold, just the CPU in here, eight gigs of RAM, no graphics card, and I'll probably keep the hard drive as well. Ideal for a basic user, and I'll probably charge 20 or 30 quid for the machine, so. I think everyone's happy there, someone's getting a good cheap system and I've made a very small profit, so plus what the video makes of course. All in all then, thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed it leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you've ever found some surprising finds like this or unexpected systems spec wise on sites like eBay and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.